What's going on guys, Nathan here, and today I'm gonna to show you a simple poker strategy that has literally skyrocketed my winnings lately, and I think it will help you out as well. All right guys, so I've been using this relatively easy poker strategy for many, many years at the small and mid stakes poker games in particular as a professional poker player, and this has really catapulted my winnings tremendously. And today I'm gonna to walk you step by step through an example hand to show you exactly how you can start using this in your poker games as well so without any further ado let's jump right into it all right guys so i call this strategy the stop and go technique and this is something that i have used especially against those tight weak opponents those regular players that you see often in small and mid stakes games these days you know people ask me all the time nathan how do you beat the regular players i can play my ace king versus the fish i know they get lucky against me sometimes but how do you play against those tighter players how do you read them in all situations so that's really who we're talking about today these are the majority of the players you're gonna face in these games you need to know the right strategy to beat them so I'm gonna walk you through a very very typical spot you've no doubt been through many many times you raise up ace queen offsuit ace of hearts queen of spades and one of these tap players tight and passive as I call them calls you on the button. Now I'm not gonna go deep into player types or board positions, table positions and so on. If you don't know that kind of stuff, what hands to play, all that stuff, I already have a free poker cheat sheet which has charts and everything showing you when to bet, raise, what hands to play. That'll be the top link in the description below. That will help you out if you're new to the game and you just want some basic strategies to get going. But we're gonna move on here. We're gonna go to the flop. And now most of you guys already know, two out of three times in poker, you're not gonna hit the flop. But we're gonna talk about an example today where we do hit the flop, but in a very precarious way. I have dozens, in fact, hundreds of other videos here on the channel talking about what to do when you don't hit the flop, but one out of three videos I make is gonna be talking about when we do hit the flop. So we do hit it here with the queen of diamonds, nine of spades, and 10 of hearts. But like I said, this is not exactly smashing the flop, guys, and I hope that some of you savvy poker players already see why. Let's talk about it. So number one, guys, this board is highly, highly coordinated. Coordinated. And what I mean by that is that there are multiple straight draw possibilities. There's made straights with a hand like King Jack, for example, or a hand like Jack Eight. Now we do need to remember that this is a tight and passive player. So it's really important to break down their range. What range of hands can this player possibly have when they call us on the button? Well, typically guys, a tight player is not going to be playing a lot of crappy hands like a 10 deuce or a nine three or something like that. That's what recreational players do fish right so this player we expect them to have a lot of broadway hands a hand like king queen king jack king 10 queen jack we also expect them to have a lot of middle pairs and small pocket pairs middle pairs really like this board hands like pocket tens pocket nines have us in almost drawing dead but he's also going to have hands like pocket eights pocket sevens and of course the smaller pocket pairs as well baby pocket pairs pocket twos threes fours they're not happy on this board and finally this player is going to have a bunch of suited connectors which are going to be very happy on this board. I'm talking about hands like Jack-10 suited. I'm talking about hands like 9-8 suited, 8-7 suited. All of these hands have a pair plus a straight draw. They're in decent shape and they're certainly going to be sticking around if we make a bet on the flop here. Finally, this player probably have some suited aces perhaps in their range, maybe a hand like ace-3 of diamonds or something like that. Those hands, of course, won't be super happy on this board, but basically, guys, what you need to know here is that a tight player is going to have a reasonably tight range of course because that's what they do they're not going to have a bunch of trash here so when we make our standard c bet on the flop here which we're going to do the vast majority of the time by the way a c bet stands for continuation bet in poker we're just continuing on the aggression that we built pre-flop this is a proven consistent way to win at poker as i talk about in all of my poker books and you guys who are fans of the channel here undoubtedly already know so we're going to be making our c bet here and the tap player the tight and passive player calls so guys there's no reason to freak out at this point really when we make our c-bet on the flop here we're just trying to fold out all those baby pocket pairs the suited aces all of those hands in their range that we just broke down so there's nothing to really worry about here so let's go on and see the turns so guys this is really where the heart of this strategy comes into play and i'm going to tell you the why at every single stage of the hand here which is really the most important thing because what i find a lot of people doing is they just make random plays at the table and they don't really know why they're making 
making them. This is again and again with my students when I ask them, why did you bet the turn? Why did you check the turn? Why did you bluff raise on the turn? And they can't give me a real reason. So I'm gonna tell you right now why we are going to slow down on the turn here. On the five of diamonds, when that drops on the turn, yes, we're gonna go into a check call mode here. Now, why do we wanna be doing this? Because guys, as we just talked about, we just broke down their entire range, okay? So all of the baby pocket pairs, the pocket fives, the ace four suited, those hands have now folded. A tight, decent, regular player is just gonna fold those when we bet on the flop. So what are they calling us with? Well, they're calling us with all of those Broadway hands, those suited connectors, and a couple monsters like pocket nines, or even a two pair like a queen 10 that have very, very good equity against us, or, and the monsters, of course, have us smoked. So we're in one of these situations, guys, where when we bet here again on the turn, which is what a lot of people will do without even thinking, there's not really any benefit for us because all we're gonna do is just get action from all of the hands that beat us and we're gonna fold out all of the hands that are remaining in his range or her range that we are ahead of. It's, there's not really a whole lot for us to gain here, guys, because like I said, bad players are not gonna call you here on the turn with 10 deuce or something. They're not even playing that hand. So what I hope that you're understanding here is that versus decent regular players, you have to approach the hand differently. We can't get value versus a recreational player. We're absolutely betting here again because we know they have all of those garbage hands that we can continue getting value from. But a good thinking player is not going to give us any more action in the hand unless they have us beat. The other thing that is crucially important about why we want to slow down here on the turn and hence the name stop and go is that we're creating what I call deception value for the river. We're going to cash in this profit on the river. This is a strategy that I break down in a ton of detail in my latest, my third book, the micro stakes playbook and how I've used this technique specifically against these tight passive players. Because when you slow down on the turn here, it gets the wheels turning in their head and they just assume you don't have anything. They assume you got the ace king here. They assume you got the pocket fours here. So with all that said, let's go see the rivers. So as I just mentioned, this is all about value betting, cashing in this deception value on the river. River comes down with the three of clubs, the proverbial brick. So all of the straight draws missed. If he had a hand like Jack 10 or a hand like Queen Jack, for example, those hands have all missed their straight draw. But since we checked on the turn, these are hands that are very, very likely to call a value bet here, guys, and catch us in a bluff with our ace king. But of course, we don't have ace king. We have top pair, top kicker with ace queen. So now guys, this is the crucial part of the hand where a lot of people mess this up as well. You want to make a value bet here of around 60% of the pot, 50%, 60%. You don't want to bet 80%, 90% of the pot, and you don't want to bet 20%. Because guys, bet sizing is incredibly important in a situation like this. I have an entire video dedicated to this in my brand new Elite Poker Training University because this topic is so vitally important. By the way, enrollment is open now. I'll include a link for that in the description below. Guys, the crucial point here is that when you're determining the right bet size on the river, the turn, any, any street in poker, you want to be thinking always about their range. What range does this player likely have? We just talked about hands like Queen Jack, Jack 10. These are very, very likely hands that we're ahead of. We can get a value bet, and that's what a value bet is, by the way. It's we're confident that we have the best hand most of the time. What you need to ask yourself is what amount are these hands likely to call? Obviously, if they're slow playing a monster like King Jack, or pocket nines, we're getting raised here on the river and we're never calling. I just need to point that out to be clear. We're talking about the part of their range here that we can value bet against. And also we wanna get some hero calls from time to time versus a hand maybe like pocket eights that just didn't believe us on the flop and decided to call. Maybe an even weaker hand like a queen eight or something like that. Guys, so putting the pieces together, how much is a hand like that likely to call? Well, I think around 50 to 60% of the pot. If we bet too low, 20%, they're gonna snap call us, but they would have probably paid 50%. And this is a massive difference, guys. These little amounts, this is a five big blind difference perhaps. And in terms of win rates, the difference between elite players and break even players in today's games. Most of the biggest winners in today's games only win at around five big blinds per hundred. So if you only bet 20% of the pot here and you miss out on five big blinds, that's literally the difference between winners and losers.
losers. We're talking about a game like poker, which is the ultimate definition of a game of iteration because it's all about thousands and thousands and millions of hands, in my case, playing as a professional player. And now let's go on the other end though. If you bet 80 or 90% of the pot here, what's a hand like Jack 10 gonna do here? They're probably gonna make a tough fold, guys. Remember, this is a decent player. We're not playing against a fish here. And these are the kind of players that are capable of laying a hand like middle pair or even top pair down here on the river versus a big bet. So guys, I hope that this basic strategy gave you an idea of how to play, especially a hand like top pair or even middle pair versus these sort of regular opponents. What you want to be doing is putting them on a range of hands at all stages of the hand, often slowing down on the turn and then making the right bet size on the river. If you can put all of the pieces of the puzzle together in a spot here, you can get the maximum value out of these kind of players. Guys, versus these tight passive players, you're never gonna win a fortune. These are what we call nut peddlers. They sit around waiting for their pocket aces. These guys are small winners at best over the long run. I do not recommend this play style that the majority of people play these days. Once again, I teach a loose and aggressive play style in all of my poker books and my advanced training course and so on, which I'll link up in the description below. But you need to understand the psychology of how these players think and what kind of range they're gonna have in each situation. And then and only then you're gonna have much more success against them. Guys, like and subscribe if you found this one helpful. And once again, if you wanna know my entire strategy to smash the small and mid stakes games, go ahead and grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope this one helped. This has been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com.